In today's video, I'm going to tell you about a mod I made to my electrical system. I'm going to tell you about some of the organizational and interior decorating things I've done inside the van. And yeah, I had my first accident and I'm going to show you that. Maybe you can see it. There's two spots on my van, so stick around. This should be fun. What is going on YouTube? This is my last day in Missouri. Tomorrow I hit the road and head to the mountains. I'm going to the Colorado Rockies, Grand Teton National Park, Glacier National Park, Mount Rainier National Park, and then Crater Lake National Park. So if that kind of stuff interests you and you wanna come along on this adventure, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. All right, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna talk about a mod I did to my electrical system, some interior decorating and storage things I did to the vehicle, and then I'm gonna talk about an accident I had. I got two little dings on my RV, which are driving me nuts. At some point, I'm gonna get them fixed. But I'll tell you the story, what happened, and show you the dings. Okay, first let's talk about the mod to the electrical system I did. If you're not familiar with the Travado, it has the Volta Pure 3 system. I have the National Park Edition, so I have the souped up version of that Pure 3 system. I have 11,600 watts of power. I have a 58 volt alternator, or as some people refer to it, an under the hood generator to charge my power pack while I'm driving or I can use an auto start system or a manual start system when I'm camping somewhere. The Volta system is a 48 volt system and it provides my coach 30 amps of power even when I'm not plugged in. So I can run everything. I can run my air conditioner and microwave and a blow dryer if I had any hair all at the same time. A few months ago, Volta came out with a Bluetooth module for this system. I did this mod myself, it's super easy, so let's check that out. So I have the Volta power system, and you can monitor it from this little screen right here, but they also have a Bluetooth module that you can install and monitor your Volta system from your phone and get all kinds of really cool stats. So I decided to purchase that, and today I'm gonna install it. The installation seems pretty easy. All I have to do is hook this into the Volta system with this. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is turn off the Volta power system. Give it a couple seconds. All right, it's off. And now we're gonna take off the panel. It's just four Phillips head screws. pull this out here and we're going to unhook this one right here let's see if I can get that there we go all right so the hardest part is done okay so you have this two prong side and this one prong side this two prong side you can't really mess up you're going to hook this one into here can't get it backwards because there's a receiver. One's, one's a receiver. All right. And then this other one goes right back in the back where the original one was. So now you're hooked back up. All right. And then finally, this is the Bluetooth receiver. You hook this in and there is screws if you wanted to screw it onto something. And there's also this 3M tape if you wanted to push it up uh, against like the wall in here. I'm just gonna shove it in there. Uh, it's not that big a deal. Okay, now we'll just throw the screws back on. Okay, now comes the big test. We'll power it up and see if everything works. All right, it came back on, so mission accomplished. Now let's check the app. Okay, so this is pretty cool. It shows my battery level. 
um, what time it'll run out and also shows my power flow. So how much power is coming in or in this case, how much power is going out and then what my pack temp is. So I know if it's getting too hot or too cold. Okay, so the next mod I made is just a little interior decorating thing, but I thought it was pretty cool. It's in my kitchen, so let's go check that out. All right, so I'm gonna spruce up the place by throwing some art on my kitchen wall here. I recently ordered some coasters from a company called Exit 82 Art in Austin, Texas. And when I got them, I was like, man, these are actually really cool. I'm gonna use these on my wall as decoration instead of as coasters. To secure them to the wall, I'm gonna use this stuff called Sticky Putty. This stuff is amazing. I got it off Amazon, I'll put a link down below. I use this stuff for just about everything, not just sticking stuff on the walls. Anything I have that sets on a surface that could move, I put this stuff on the bottom of it, and it's worked amazing. All right, so now I'm gonna throw some of that stuff on the back of each one of these coasters, and I'm gonna put them on the wall. I'm probably overdoing it a little bit, but I'm gonna put the sticky putty on all four corners just to make sure uh, it stays secure on the wall. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment below telling me where you're watching from. The YouTube algorithm will show this video to more people, the more thumbs up and the more comments I have. So I appreciate you doing that. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Okay, so now I'm gonna stick them on the wall and see how they look. It's no use living if you're already dead. This is the most famous work by this artist, so if you know who it is, like I said, type it down below. We'll see who the artistic people are. Okay, so there we go. Let's see how this looks. Sing it like if you want to the next time i turn around you'll have grown into a woman in a single bound i hope i never take you for granted spending time with you is all that i wanted but i'll go back to when you were small burning all our favorite records on the cd rom we were splitting headphones in hand. all right so i'm done with this little project not too bad if i do say so myself i really really like it but tell me what you think down below. Is it something that you would do or just not your style? Okay, so now we're gonna talk about some of the organizational things I've done to the van, specifically to the back of the van here. If you watched my video about my first 48 hours in the van, you'll know that I bought a black tank hose, an aftermarket one, and I was just gonna use that instead of the one the vehicle came with. I decided not to bring that with me. That's why the bag I was carrying it with is missing from here. I decided to go with the factory version because it has its own storage compartment. It's a little bit shorter than the one I bought, but I'm gonna go ahead and see if that one works. So just a little tip, don't buy anything until you test out what you get. It was probably pretty dumb of me to buy that thing. So first off, I bought a few of those 3M hooks. So you'll see there's one there, there's one there. There's a special kind right there. Those are really awesome. They hold up to seven pounds. So the stuff I have attached to them are fine. One of the comments I got on my first 48 hour video was I should have two hoses, one for black water tank flush and one for fresh water fill. So that's what I did. I went out and got two hoses. This black one, since it's black, is for the black water tank flush. It's a 25 foot hose. And then this blue one is for fresh water tank fill. I went on Amazon and bought these little rapid things so I could just hang them from the 3M hooks. The next thing you see hanging here is my RV water filter. So this big blue thing, I got the big one, just lasts a little longer and I figured why not. I have two things hooked to that water filter. I have a pressure regulator, so if the pressure's too strong, it'll slow it down and it won't blow out any of my pipes in my RV. And then I have a little flexible hose so I don't mess up whatever I'm hooking it up to. For this, I got another one of those 3M hooks that you can put something round in and it works great. I also put a little Velcro here, so it's Velcro to the side, so it won't be bouncing around when I'm driving. I also bought this little cap here because if you don't have a cap like this, 
this thing will leak all over your van. So I just throw this cap on here and it keeps it from leak it, leaking when it's hanging from here. I also got a couple of hooks that you just stick to the wall. I'll probably get more permanent hooks, but I wasn't exactly sure where I was gonna hang these other two things. So I wanted something temporary. So right now I have a little shovel hanging here. I also threw some Velcro tape on here. So when it's bouncing around when I'm driving, it doesn't make a ton of noise. So the last thing I have here is this collapsible bucket. And when the door's shut, it doesn't clank around too much. I can't even hear it. So this is one of the organizational things I've done on the back of the van. I wasn't sure if people wanted to see this type of content, so I figured I'd test it out. I've got a lot more organizational things that I've done inside the van. So if you wanna see more organizational videos or you want that a part of other videos, just let me know down in the comments and I'll be sure to include that in future videos. All right, finally the part you guys are probably all waiting for, my wreck and damage to my vehicle. So here's what happened. I was driving down a side road in a neighborhood in a town where I stopped to get gas. The road was super narrow and there were a bunch of these like basketball hoops, you know, those portable ones you can roll out into the street. As I was transiting down, another big truck came at me from the other way and there's no way we were both gonna fit on this narrow street. So I kind of veered over a little bit to stop and let him pass. When I did that, I didn't notice one of those basketball hoops kind of hanging over. So the basketball hoop area hit the front of my vehicle. I don't know if you can see it from here. Let's see, it's right around there. And then it bounced back and then came and hit my vehicle here, scratched it a little bit, bounced back up and then hit my little light there. Um, so three points of damage. I'm not super concerned about the light. That's an easy fix. I wish it just would have hit there. Most people don't even notice it, but it bothers me. And at some point I'm gonna stop at an auto repair shop where they can match the paint uh, and fix it. I'm a huge Dave Ramsey fan. And one of the things he talks about is the stupid tax. So this is my stupid tax. I should have been paid more attention to my surroundings and now I'm gonna pay for it um, to get this thing fixed. So that's what happened with the wreck. Nothing major, nothing scary, something really silly that was avoidable. And hopefully you can learn from my mistake if you get one of these rigs and not make that same mistake. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. But if you're just like the, the complete worst person, your mother hates you, your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your wife or your husband hates you, your kids don't even like you, you know, you're the kind of person that'll give a thumbs down. So go ahead and hit that thumbs down. See you on the road.